Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to be doing a bit of an update on the Bolands GT2000. Since the last video, we've done a number of things off camera um, on this engine, and we will run through them now. Um, first thing we did was take apart the starter motor, because when we were testing it in the last video, it sounded quite rattly, so we cleaned up the bearings and stuff like that in here. And now the only rattle is from the wear in this gear on the end. So we're quite happy that we've sorted the bearings um, in there. And we also put this uh, back on here to see if this would actually engage with the flywheel with how worn it is and it does actually still engage with the flywheel so this is technically usable although it would be preferable to probably change uh, that for a new one if we could find one that's actually a reasonable price uh, the next thing we did was sort out the bolts that hold on the starter motor these are the original ones um, which if you remember from the last video snapped at the end of the starter motor. So we had to make up some new ones here um, because if you try to buy some uh, new old stock off of Kohler, I think they cost uh, quite a lot. So we made some that are a bit longer to allow for a bracket to go around here to solve uh, the cracks and holes in the casting from when this was loose. Speaking of which, we've also uh, made a solution to that problem. This was the original prototype that Gareth gave us that he'd kind of made up uh, for a bracket to go round there. And we've kind of based our idea off of this. Uh, we did say that we wanted to use this bolt hole as like a locator to add more strength. So our original plan, uh, we thought we'd get a bit of angle iron and then uh, cut the cut one length a bit longer, then bend these bits up. You can see we bent this bit and this bit up then welded it to make uh, like a box and then we thought that would have right angles and that would be fine but when we tried to fit this on here we realized that these bits aren't actually at right angles to each other and that's obviously because all of this is cast and casting doesn't have to be at 90 degrees it'll be uh, whatever shape the mold was which in this case most definitely wasn't 90 degrees so we had to do something a bit more custom than just some standard 90 degree stuff. So, in the end, we had to make it out of four different bits of metal and do some crafty welding uh, by Dad. And this is what we came up with. If I kind of uh, put this in here, you can see that top part is completely complementary to the angles on the casting. And we've opened up this C section as much as we possibly can. So it's a tiny bit bigger than that. However, if we compare it to um, the shape on here by lining up these, you can see it's a very snug fit there. So the starter motor can actually only go through this bracket straight. So we shouldn't have any issues with this, uh, like what happened before with the starter motor trying to go walkabouts. And you can see there we have our bolt hole for the engine mounting bolt. So that'll work as a locator and also uh, kind of keep it in position as well. You may have noticed we've taken the flywheel off uh, to get more access to uh, the front of the engine so that we could make up our bracket, but we did notice a couple of things while that was off. You can see this kind of fresh rust on uh, the end of here, which is really not good because that suggests that the water level was up to about here, which if we look around to where the heads are, that's about piston level so I'm sure we're going to have some nice discoveries when we look over there but something else we did notice is there seems to be some little clip thing wedged between the cylinder fins there which I assume dropped down from the top of the engine hit the flywheel and went flying that way uh, but I'll just try and pull that out now there we go not fully sure where that's come off but I'm sure we'll find 
um, something that's missing a cover or a clip at some point. Anyway, the third thing we noticed was uh, the stator. We did talk in the last video about how this was moving. If I move this here, you can see that bolt at the top does not move at all when I do this. It stays in its position, whereas the other one uh, actually moves with it, which is really not good because we're either looking at some very loose bolts or some sheared bolts. Um, so what I'll do is just tighten these up quickly and see if that makes a difference. Hopefully it will, because that would just mean that they're loose. And that one does feel uh, relatively loose. So we can tighten it up to there. That one feels quite tight already. Uh, we'll see if that makes a difference. And there we go, that is holding that uh, nicely. Now, it's a good sign that tightening those bolts up meant that the stator doesn't move anymore. Uh, that might just need some new bolts or possibly some spring washers to make sure that doesn't come undone again and then it can stay uh, rigid as it should be. Obviously the oil leaking out of this oil seal uh, wouldn't have helped for keeping these bolts tight. Speaking of that, this whole front of the engine is completely covered in oil and that will obviously need uh, quite a big clean up at some point, but that's quite time consuming. And before we go spending money on parts like the oil seal or spending tons more time uh, cleaning it up, we want to make sure this engine is actually viable first. So one thing we have done off camera is we dropped a bit of oil out of it. You can see in this corner of this tray uh, it is a bit cloudy, which shows that it might have a bit of water in it, but also it smells like it's got petrol in it, which really isn't very good. And so there's multiple things uh, about the fuel system on this tractor, which obviously we'll need to investigate that. And we won't even try to run this on that oil. So it'll need an oil and oil filter change uh, before we attempt to start this up, if we're confident that it will start at some point in the future. But what we'd like to do now is uh, take the heads off of it and check the state of the pistons and the bores uh, because obviously with the water level being up to here we can't be certain until we have a look as to the state of the bores and uh, that will be quite an expensive repair if it was to be repaired if it is in bad condition because then you go down the route of uh, reboring it new pistons all of that stuff which is very expensive and obviously with it not being our tractor uh, it's not really ours our choice to make that call but what we'll try and do now is see if we can get uh, one of these heads off and see what's going on underneath it we've bolted back on uh, the flywheel and this is so that we can kind of turn the engine over when we're checking out the pistons and the bores to see what condition they are in uh, now obviously we'll need to take all of the head bolts out and courtesy of our cats um, we've got these two cat food tin like cardboard surrounds that we've put indents in for um, the kind of location of all of the head bolts. Some of them are just nuts, but this should keep them in the same place uh, just in case some of the bolts are longer, which by the looks of it, these ones are, and it'll keep them all in the right place. T uh, for top, not Tom, and uh, no product placement intended, but we'd always recommend having a cat. Um, but originally we were planning to do a compression test on this uh, first, but if you listen to the sound this makes when I move the flywheel, you can hear there's no seal on that. It's pushing air and liquid out. As you can see by uh, that, that looks like a bit of rusty water that's dropped out of there. So clearly there's no seal on that, so there's no point doing a compression test because we already know what the results uh, will be. So we shall take off all of the head bolts. Um, from looking at the manual, the torque setting shouldn't be too high on these, so hopefully they won't be too tight. But I'm going to break them off with this uh, small breaker bar first. Um, and then we'll see where we go from there. I'm not going to force anything because I don't want to snap anything, but... That one seems to be moving. Very slowly though, I'm not too sure about that. 
at Sveta. Thank you. That one had plenty of oil on it, so no surprise that that came on and done easily. It seems quite tight still. There we go. All right, so from first examination, it seems to be these two that are quite tight still. Obviously don't want to force it too much because I don't want to snap any bolts or anything. I think that is moving slowly, but yeah, I don't want to break it. All of this is aluminium. That's quite tight still. Uh, but what I will do is start undoing the ones that we have got loose. And I shall use this new uh, King Dick ratchet that we picked up at a uh, car boot this morning. And um, we've been doing quite a few more of these uh, tool car boots recently and we picked this up from uh, a seller that we've bought quite a few tools off of over the weeks this year and uh, he actually had two of these this was the better condition one and he, he knows quite a bit about tools and he was telling us about how um, these were actually standard for the British Army I believe and the other one he had actually had a number stamped into it there, which I assume was like a logging code uh, for like a kit list or something. But our one unfortunately doesn't have that. That shows that these were good quality tools. Anyway, we shall, I'll start undoing some of these. They do seem quite loose already, because obviously with the break bar, uh, it's good to see that the threads don't seem to be damaged or anything. Some of these are too loose to actually take off with the ratchet. Others like this one definitely aren't. If they're too loose to, loose to take off with the ratchet, I see that as a, a good side that the threads are clean. We paused the video there because we were a bit concerned about those middle two bolts mainly this one and uh, how we actually got that undone in the end was just working it back uh, a bit and then forwards a bit and it took quite a while but eventually we got it so that it is off and you can see from the bolt uh, there's a bit of damage on there but there's also quite a bit of carbon build up on that and you can see now on here uh, there's a bunch of carbon on there uh, which all came out of that bolt hole but what you may have also noticed on the table is a tiny bit of water that dripped out of there as we undid everything. And we deliberately left the bottom bolt uh, done up for the last bit. So we shall see how much water drips out of here as we undo this. This should be the only thing holding stuff in. There you go, you can see a bit of water dripping now. There we go, you can see the seal starting to break and quite a bit of water coming out now. This bolt, bolt is now out and there's absolutely tons of water coming out. I can see Mr. Cameraman is just currently trying to find a cup to catch this water in, so sorry for any shaky camera work, but... too late it's all leaked out <laughs> <laughs> worth a try but at least now we can put the bolts into our uh, mold part and this bolt was absolutely covered in water by the way so it shows that that's been saturated for a while now we can just go around and take each of these out and put them into uh, the holes that they go in in our cat food tin box that's soaked too, uh, which I'm assuming that is water, not oil. Let me take out our dry one uh, from the carbon. 
then the other side is completely soaked either oil or water one of the two obviously not sure we've already got all of the ones that are just nuts um on here with their washers we take this one out and we should be safe to take out the top one uh, seeing as there are three studs locating uh, the head i'll just keep that pushed in though and what we can do now is see if this will come off and unveil whatever's behind it it does seem like it's moving so that's good to make sure i've got a good grip of this and there we go it does seem like there's a bit of uh, rusty liquid in there but oh that's disgusting isn't it yeah i'll just try and get the torch a bit more in there definitely been water in there We've had a very brief clean up now, and uh, there's no lip on the bottom here, which is good. And if you look closely, you can actually see some of the original honing marks, uh, which is also good. Less good is all of this uh, rust uh, that goes up the side here. Obviously it doesn't go the full length of the bore, it's just the end, but it's still not very good to see uh, that rust there. By the looks of it, the water level's been all the way up to the top because there isn't really any dry spots uh, up the top here either and we did uh, just turn it over a tiny bit uh, using the flywheel and both of the valves move so that's uh, good too what we will do now is effectively repeat the process on the other side to see the condition of the other cylinder and we'll give you an update uh, when we're about to pull the head off that now on to the other side and we have uh, loosened off all of the bolts a bit now and I'll just start undoing them by hand as I talk to you but as you can see around the sides of uh, the head on this side there aren't any there isn't any uh, oil residue or water spillages or anything from us loosening this off uh, which shows that we shouldn't have uh, the same water in there also shows there might be a decent head gasket on this side which is promising um, by the looks of it, this bolt on this side is covered in uh, carbon and that sort of residue again, which is an interesting thing to spot, seeing as it's the same bolt on both sides. But actually, this is the one closer to the exhaust on this side, whereas on the other side, it was the other way around, I think. But none of these bolts uh, were particularly difficult to loosen off, unlike the other side, which took quite a while to get these middle two uh, out, I believe but our cat food holder things are coming in very handy. As you can see, the studs actually come out with this one, but that's not necessarily a bad thing to clean up the face of the head. We'd probably need to take the studs out. Um, anyway, I'm just thinking about what order I should probably take these off in. Because obviously without that top stud, there's only two to locate it and I don't want to drop it, obviously. Thank you to my cameraman for holding that for me. Now we've just got one left and then in theory this should be free to come off. I'll try and move that out of the way and see what lies beneath this one. Feels free, but I can see the gasket is uh, slightly sticking, I think, so I don't want to damage the, da the gasket too much. Um, i trying to think what I could get that off with. Is there a little screwdriver around there or anything? There we go, there's a scraper. Part it away from the head with it. Just gently, I don't want to break it, of course. Um, there we go. That is the gasket off. If I pull this off, uh, you can see that there's quite a bit of oily 
residue in here, but there's no signs of water, I don't think, which is a very good seeing as this has been in a flood. We've now had a bit of a clean up on this side, or an early clean up at least, of the top of the barrel and uh, the head. We're quite happy that there's no uh, scoring damage or any damage to the uh, bore. Uh, you can see on the piston there, it says fly with an arrow pointing this way, uh, showing that at least the pistons are in the right way. That's always a good start. And also it says STD there, which means standard. So that hasn't been rebored in the past. Uh, now with the valves, uh, the seats don't appear to be in the best condition and there is a bit of debris behind there. So that could be uh, definitely some work we'll need to do in future. But if we go around to the other side, you can see we've cleaned up the uh, front or the top of the barrel on this side too. And it's in uh, pretty similar condition to the other side. Now we haven't touched the head on this side yet though, so that's a good comparison for you. Uh, for how much debris we took off the other one. Obviously the other one wasn't quite as bad as this, uh, but still we're quite happy that uh, there is very little water damage on this, seeing as it was in a flood and it could have quite easily uh, wrecked the engine, but it does seem to be in decent uh, condition. But what we're going to be getting up to now is finding some parts that actually work with this engine. And what I mean by that is the fact that we've looked up the uh, serial number on, or the part number on this oil filter, and it is the oil filter for a Kohler Command engine, not a Kohler Magnum like this one. The part numbers that we've seen don't seem to cross match each other. So this technically has the wrong oil filter on it at the moment. Same with the spark plugs. Uh, these have a slightly different part number to what we think they should be for a Kohler Magnum. So we're going to have a look online and see if we can find some parts uh, that are actually meant to be on this engine. But in the meantime, we've also got some cleaning up to do on the head for the other side. But that is it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.